one of the things I wrote about recently is apologetics for technical analysis. Apologetics usually refers to religion where you're making arguments against arguments against religion, okay? And I thought technical analysis apologetics would be a really good topic. And I've been working on some chapters in a book I'm working on on apologetics. And it's, uh, I'm a nerd, but I think it's really cool stuff. And one thing is that fundamentals make a lot of sense, just not in the markets. The conclusions drawn by market participants to play, stay, or run away may be drawn by fundamentals or formulas. However, their ultimate actions are purely emotional, and that's neurology, as we've discussed quite a bit. How they reach their conclusions is irrelevant. What they actually do is. Your job is not to figure out why they are doing something, something that you won't know until long after the fact. If then, your job is to figure out what they are doing. And charts will tell you this, if you're willing to listen, of course. It, the charts will go up if they are buying for whatever reasons. We talked about this last week in the week of charts. The charts will go down if they're selling for whatever reason. Again, we talked about that last week. And the charts will chop sideways if they're doing both. So they're kind of canceling each other out. Again, what they're thinking is irrelevant. What they're doing is. And that's trend of thought. Random thoughts from a trend following moron. And that's the apologetics section. All right, back to fundamentals. The biggest argument against fundamentals is when it comes to fundamentals, institutions have a major advantage. An advantage that you will never have. And here's some of the institutional advantages. And these are just a few I thought of over the off the cuff. There's probably many more. They have millions of dollars in computers, and they have hundreds, if not thousands, on staff. And they have unprecedented access to companies. And these bigger institutions could just pick up the phone and call the CEO and say, hey, what's going on? Or they could send some guy over there to meet with their chief financial officer and go through the books. It's like, hey, we're going to put a 20 million in your company. How about you uh, open up the books and let's take a look before we give you $20 million or before we buy $20 million worth of stock. Now, here's the thing. In spite of all these advantages, 90 to 98% can't beat the S&P 500. And the 98% number that I derived by doing a little Googling was based on big cap stocks, which should, if you're a stock picker and you're picking big cap stocks, you should be able to outperform the S&P 500 because that's your, your whole goal is to, is to replicate something like the S&P 500, but better. So 98% of those guys can't beat the S&P and the other 90% in, in overall can't beat the S&P. So if they have all those resources, resources that you will never have, how in the world do you think you could beat the market with fundamentals? And the answer is you can't.